So we have so many tools to treat this disease, and we're making amazing advances in the treatment of this disease. Mm -hmm. But where we're falling short as cardiologists and as doctors and as a society is trying to prevent this disease. Laughter may be the best medicine. Laughter has been linked to the healthy function of blood vessels, and 15 minutes of laughter has been shown to be about equivalent to 30 minutes of aerobic exercise with respect to our cardiovascular health. Exercise is the fountain of youth. It is extraordinarily important to do things physically to get your heart rate up for your health. It reduces stress, it improves your sleep, it improves your focus, and improves your memory. It improves your metabolism so we don't gain weight. We can't have a discussion about health without talking about sleep. And people who don't get enough sleep will have higher blood pressures, higher cholesterol levels, will be more stressed. Their metabolism will slow down, their appetite will increase. So putting a, a premium on a good night's sleep is very underrated, but very important. Diet. You are what you eat. Diet isn't just about what you weigh. You need good nutrition to fuel you, to help you fight disease in the aging process. Focus on your waistline, not your weight. Too many people are all consumed about what they weigh. Look at your waistline. The fat around your waist is active metabolically and is bad for you. It makes your blood pressure higher. It makes your cholesterol levels worse. And it makes you more prone to diabetes. Anything that you can do to reduce your waistline is good for your heart health and your overall health, even if you're at normal weight. And liposuction doesn't count. Being optimistic, focusing on the part of the glass that's half full, having a sense of humor is a healthier way to live. I think the economy today has a tremendous impact on, on all of us. And uh, people are more stressed now than they ever have been. And they're not practicing stress reduction. And stress is just bad for you. It's a killer. It increases your risk of heart disease. But people are working two jobs. They're trying to get home to their children. They're not making ends meet. And as a result, they're not exercising, they're not going to their doctor's appointments, they're not practicing prevention. In addition, it certainly caused uh, a lot of people to go to fast food restaurants. Women are more likely with heart attacks to present with shortness of breath, jaw pain, back pain, symptoms of indigestion, but most women who are having heart attacks know something's wrong. So if you feel that something's wrong, don't wait. Women don't personalize this risk. They might know that heart disease is their number one killer, but they don't think it affects them. And the best uh, report that came out from the American Heart Association in the last survey was 53% of American women who believe they're actually having a heart attack will call 911. That means 47% of women in this country who actually believe they're having a heart attack won't call 911. Why? It didn't tell us why. Why they're too busy? They gotta go pick up their kids somewhere? It's important for women to take care of themselves better. It's important for women to be educated about this disease. When you educate a woman, you educate a family. And I think women have to know they're at risk, but I think educating women will also be our best tool to improve our society's health.